about this already. I talked about this 15 minutes ago. So I apologize. No, no, I'm, listen, I can't go over everything again and again for every person who comes every five minutes. Can I answer this? No, no, I, I covered it already. You, the next gentleman, he comes up after 10 minutes. Okay, no, no, no. Maybe someone listening today, maybe someone who listened to what I said could explain. Maybe even a non-Muslim could explain to her what I said about the veil. Huh? What I said about it. Huh? You see people, because Islam is a practical way of life. It works. It works. You see, now when your newspapers talk, oh, these Muslims are thrown back to the Middle Ages. Yeah, for us, what you call your Dark Ages was the age of enlightenment, was the age of civilization. Huh? It wasn't Dark Ages for the Muslims, but when you were ruled by Christianity, you were living in your Dark Ages. Why? You know why? Because Christianity is a lie. And when you left the lie, when you left the lie, you changed, you advanced. Huh? But when we Muslims, we had the truth, and the truth made us noble, and the truth made us strong, but we left the truth. And so what happened? Allah humiliated us. He humiliated us. Huh? Study, read for yourself. Go and find out for yourself, and see for yourself, people. Because Islam is not just a religion of the next life, it's a religion for this life, for the here and for the now. And I know you don't like it, right? But those Muslim fundamentalists, those madmen of God, you call them, huh? the madmen of God, what do they say it in French? How do they call it? I can't remember how it goes. The, the madmen of God, they call them in Algeria. Huh? The fanatics, the fundamentalists. You see people, when the companion of the Prophet Muhammad, when he went and he was invited by the Persian general Rostrum, and because the Muslims were fighting the Persians, after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, the Muslims started fighting the Persians. And this Persian general, he called him and he said, why are you fighting us? If you want camels, we'll give you camels and go back to the desert. You want women and money, we'll give you it, just go back. He said, no, we've come to call the people <coughs> away from the worship of men to the worship of the one true God, Allah. We've come to call them away from the injustices of man-made religions to the justice of Islam. We've come to take them out of the darkness into the light. That's why the Muslims, they fought. That's why those Muslim soldiers, in 20 years, in 20 years, they conquered the largest peace, the largest empire the world has seen, apart from the Mongol Empire. From Morocco to China, in a mere 20 to 40 years. In 40 years. And all for what? For money? For booty? No. To bring the people the light and the justice of Islam. That's the only reason. Which I have tried to explain to you and illustrate to you practically how Islam will improve your life. How Islam will improve the life of your family. It will give you the right direction. And it will tell you the reason for which you've been created and teach you how to manifest that purpose practically in your life. People, so the message of the prophets was not only to tell you that there's a hellfire, and there surely is. And it wasn't only to tell you that there's a day of judgment, and there surely is. And it wasn't only to tell you that there's a paradise, and there surely is. But it was also to teach us how to live right here, right now. So people, we say with absolute knowledge, and we can prove, we believe we can prove it to you, that Islam will bring you the good success of this life and the next life. The true success of this life and the next life. So I pray to Allah and I hope that Allah will accept my efforts to call you to that success of this life and the next. And may Allah guide you and me towards it. And I say God's peace and blessings be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers, how many among us claim that he loves God? How many among us claim that they love God? But how many also claim that they hate Satan? You see, the tongue, the tongue says something, but the behavior may contradict what your tongue utters. Those who do not obey God, in fact, they do not love Him. And those who obey Satan, in fact, they love Him. But God does not depend on claims. God wants to see deeds. Therefore, God said in the Quran, do people think that they will be left alone by saying we believe and yet they won't be tested? 
Is, do people believe that they will be... Uh, do men think that they will be left alone by saying we believe and yet they won't be tested? Anyone claim that he believes? Even in the book of James in the Bible, the book of James say, you say that I believe, fine you do. But you know something, Satan claims that he believes in God. Would that give him any sort of salvation? No! Because he rejected God's command. Because he rejected God's command. That is why I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you have, when you tell me that you believe in God, you have to obey Him. When you tell me that you believe in the day of judgment, you have to, you have to do something before you die until the day of judgment comes. You have to prepare for the day of judgment. One person came to the Prophet Muhammad and asked him when, what, or when the time of the day of judgment will come. When, it, when will it be? When it will be? And the Prophet said, "What have you prepared yourself for it? Did you pray yourself? Did you prepare yourself for it?" The same question we ask all of you. Did we prepare for the day of judgment? No. That means we don't believe in it. Practically, we don't. Do we believe God? Do you believe in God? No. Yes. Basically, we say yes. But if you analyze your behaviors and your deeds, you will find that your behavior contradicts always what you utter and what you testify. That is why it is very important that claims are not dependent on what, you, what God is waiting from each one of us to do the right and to prepare, to prepare himself for the day of judgment. Now let me answer the, the lady that she was asking about. Excuse me, lady, brother. Brother, brother, now as, as an answer to your question, can I, would you let me, excuse me, would you let me answer your question? I want to answer your question. Let's suppose, let's suppose you're Christian. Are you Christian? I don't want to have anything to do with religion. All right, all right. To give you an example, just to give you an example, okay? If you're a Christian, the Bible says in the first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 5 first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 5 I know that Christian women will not will not accept it but please be patient the first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 5 says if a woman does not agree to cover the hair the hair should be shaved it should be shaved that's not a Muslim. That's that's not a Muslim. That's not a Muslim judgment. That's not a Muslim verdict. It is a Christian verdict. And we find in the in the book Sons of Solomon that the the, 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 the speaker of the Sons of Solomon he says, "How lady, I love your eyes that hide the, that hide that that are hidden behind your veil. You are showing your."